Hi, I'm Derek Fraser. Welcome back to another episode of Cold Stream Rod Shop. Tonight I'm going to go through the process that we went through to build the 32 pickup uh, box for our truck. Our original vision for the truck was actually to have a stake bed um, because we didn't have a box, uh, didn't have fenders. Uh, but on a trip, much like the one we did over this past summer, we came across some coop fenders. Um, coop fenders are not the same shape as what the pickup uh, fenders are. Um, specifically, the crown is slightly different on the pickup truck fenders. They come up and they go straight over. Another thing too is they actually kick in um, here. There's a there's a there's a gap, so you can't really fit the coop fenders to a pickup box because they're not quite the same shape. But since we were starting from scratch. I decided to build my own box. Um, at first it was a little intimidating, but I found a friend that was building a 33 Ford pickup and I went up and I measured, you know, all the little reveals on the sides and where the, the beads were on the back, uh, on the back and, and made a couple sketches. Um, we're going in to insert some pictures along the way here of the process because we took a lot of pictures, uh, but we weren't doing the videos at the time. So the first step was actually to mount the fenders on the pickup um, and then basically get a measurement kind of where we wanted the sides to be. What I wound up with was a box that was 56 inches long. The sides are the same as the original, which are 18 and a half. And then this little section here that tips over is I think three three and a half inches. So what I did, I took a piece of sheet metal and I laid out this shape on it and I said, well, let's see if I can bead roll it. So my first attempt was this. So I laid out the basic shape on a piece of metal and said, well, okay, I can, I can do that. Um, and then I took it over to the brake and I bent it up and basically that's what you have there. So on a much larger scale, I got the sheet of sheet metal. Um, over here on the bead roller, um, I'll show you how I came up with the shape. The other day, a little tight quarters here and sharp edges. The other day I grabbed a piece of sheet metal and it's there's a one inch pattern that goes along here. I use my beat my uh, two dies here. I've got one that's sharp on the top, and the other one on the bottom there. I've softened the edge on it. So essentially, this one is run here. Um, this is the Franken roller. I've got basically adjustable handles onto it because sometimes when you're twisting a big piece, you've got to take your handles off as you turn things. So I just use the vice grips as handles. It works really well. So basically follow the line here. And you're going to have to make two, you, you'll have to make probably two passes, that first pass, and then come, come back around and tighten it up. For the inside, Essentially, you just reverse the process. Um, so I had to reverse the wheels around in order to go on the opposite side. We stopped the video for a second. I didn't it's basically just switch the wheels around. And now I've got the sharp edge on this side. The inner corner here, you have to turn really fast because it's a sharp corner.
pretty one there, but I'll go over it again. So you've got to do at least two passes on this in order to get a nice crown on it. Um, this obviously is not the pattern for the side of the pickup bed, but I'm just demonstrating how you can make this one inch raised pattern if you want to do this yourself. Of course, if you've got one of those electric feed bead rollers, it's, uh, it's a lot easier. But there's no reason why you can't do this yourself at home. Um, the bigger panel, obviously, sometimes you've got to get a little help. So the camera lady here, she helped me. It, it took an afternoon. So there you can see basically how I did the outside, I did the inside, and then, I, like I said, that was my test panel to, to do the sides. So once I had the sides done a couple passes, um, this inside corner is a little more challenging. I had to take a piece of uh, three quarter inch pipe basically beat it in with a hammer until I get the nice corner shape there. If you don't get it perfectly right when you're rolling the beads, you can, uh, you can do a little bit of dolly work. So once I had the beads rolled onto it, then I took it up to a friend's house because my break is only, I think it's 36 inches long. So a friend had a much larger break. Um, actually, Jeff York Restorations, I went up to see Jeff and Jeff was kind enough to to put these bends onto it. Um, the stake posts on the side was another thing. On a 32 forward, you kind of come down, bend out or whatever. I just wanted something relatively straight and simple. So I made these up. I played around a little bit on a metal brake. Um, essentially what I did, I bent the 45s or the 90s part of me on this side. Then I basically I put it in the brake like this and I bent the sides up. I don't know if we can get over there or not. Oh. So the first step was to bend the 90 here. And I did the I did the 90 on either side. I played around a bit. And then essentially I just stuck it. I stuck it in the brake like that. And then I just tipped both sides up. So at first I was a little too wide. I did that on the other side. But then I came up with a little narrower version, which is ultimately over there on the sides of the pickup truck. Oops, sorry. So that's the sides. Um, that's how I did the stake pockets. And then this little piece here is just three quarter inch steel tubing. And I just welded it, welded it along here and I just kept going back and forth so I didn't distort it and ground it flat. And I've got this nice edge onto it. The, um, the back of the bed was another thing. Um, you can see the beads here. I've got four of them. And if there's any 32 Ford purists out there, they'll realize there's actually five of them. There's one that goes down the center. 
Because my bead roller doesn't go that far, <laughs> I decided to only put four of them in and I basically positioned my vertical beads as far out as I could get on my bead roller. Um, still the same effect. Essentially I, I laid out the piece, um, ran my beads each way, and then I've got the basically the, the stiffness that I wanted. Across the top is another piece of three quarter inch steel tubing that I welded in place. And then much like the originals, you can see where I've folded these tabs over and then just basically done like a little spot weld, hold them in place, kind of like the way the original one was done. Um, to fasten it onto the body, onto the frame itself, um, I positioned the sides up. Um, the width, because I'm using the coupe fenders, is a little wider. Um, so it's 44 inches in this particular case to use the coupe fenders. Because it has to come out to... Actually, it has to come in. I've, uh, sorry, it has to come in to meet the sides of the coupe fenders because they come in further. And I think the original one goes out further. So using the coupe fenders... It's 44 on the inside, and then I chose a length of 56. Uh, I laid down this 2x4 steel tubing in the back, one in the front, and I basically leveled it with my cab so that my cab and my box were sitting kind of parallel to each other. Then I tacked the sides on. Once I tacked the sides on, then I put some one by one steel tubing down the side, put these extra supports here, and then you can see the little tabs I welded on to basically hook up with the original holes in the, uh, the 32 passenger car frame. On a previous episode, you could, I also went through here. This is where the battery box is going to hook in. That's, there's another episode, an early episode on that when I was building it. Uh, another thing I built for this, I had seen on the Brookville Roadster uh, pickup beds that they make, they made this little door um, so that you can access the passenger car uh, gas tank. So again, never did it before, but I said, what the heck, there's got to be a way to do this. So I decided to play around. I took a, a piece of... Uh, eighth inch plate, I made a little bent hinge, took a piece of rod, and then welded two pieces of metal here with a hole onto it, basically to as my trial. Um, so I said, well, okay, that's the right idea, but I need my, I need to come up a little further. So the final one was, I just basically made my hinge so that this piece comes, it's got more of an arc to it. But like anything, it's try the first time, and if you don't succeed, modify it and do it the second time. The plan with this is just to go out and get like a little um, lock, like sometimes you see on cabinets, so that there's a little key here I can put in. I can put the key in and open the door up. I think on the Brookville ones, they've got like a little finger thing here and a magnet. I'm not so sure if that's going to work so well, so I think what I'm going to do is put the little lock and key thing here. But this has been on the car. It's set up so that I did it you know, with the, the gas tank in place, so I've got access and everything. Put that over there. The other thing for this was tailgate. Um, again, didn't have an original 32 Ford tailgate, but when we visited the same gentleman out west, for the fenders, he had these Brookville Roadster tailgates, which I believe are Model A's, but Brookville Roadster, I think when you buy their uh, 32 uh, boxes, they sell it with this particular um, tailgate on it. It didn't come with the hinges, but same thing. It's like I wanted to make some hinges that looked more like the 32. The 32 actually has a third one down the center, but I've got this nice little Ford emblem here that I paid extra for. I kind of wanted to keep it. 
So just use the, I think it's one inch, one inch by quarter flat bar. Laid a flat bar down, letter piece going around, drilled a hole through. Once I had the hole through here, I made these little, little ears here with holes into them, positioned them, and then welded them in place. We'll try and insert some pictures while I'm talking here. Um, and at the end of the different steps we went through. But that's how I put the 32 pickup box together. It was a little bit of, uh, you know, put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. Whole thing trying to make sure that the box is perfectly square with it. Like I said, the, the overall length that, that I chose was basically going to put it over right to where the uh, 32 passenger car frame ends. Um, and then, you know, having the coupe fenders, adapting those to fit the, or the box to fit the fenders. Um, the mock-up, as you've seen in probably our Instagram site or Facebook site, it actually looks, you know, the symmetry is good. It turned out really well and we're quite happy with it. Um, go forward on this. We are going to sandblast, clean it up. I've got some metal uh, stainless steel strips here and I've got some wood, so I'm going to make a wooden um, inserts for it with the stainless steel strips. Again, we'll do that on another episode, but we just wanted to cover how we put the 32 pickup uh, box together, how we built it. Um, hopefully you'll see the pictures in the middle and towards the end here of the, the steps that we took. If there's any questions on the measurements or how I positioned it, uh, shoot us a message. If I didn't cover it here, I'll do my best to answer your questions. Um, but that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully uh, you could follow along our thought process and you know, how we took some of the, uh, the things and made them as simple as possible. And uh, again, hope you enjoy. Everybody take care. Have a good one. Thank you.